Today we're going to talk about syntactical issues. It's very quick. It's very simple. The long and short of it is this. Verb, subject, object. You've heard me talk about it before. Generally speaking, in Hebrew, the verb comes first, the subject comes second, if at all, and then third comes the object. Now, quickly, on the object, it could be an indirect object with a preposition like L or L, or it'll be the direct object with F, the direct object marker. Now, with the verb, you have built in subject, right? Because we have the person uh, built in. So uh, the subject might not even be present. It might not be listed except for what's built into the verb already. If the subject is also added, that is in and of itself emphatic. So it's providing emphasis since it's already built into the verb. This is just like in Spanish, okay? I don't need to say, yo soy Jaime. I can simply say, soy Jaime. But if I add, yo soy, yo makes it a little stronger, doesn't it? So the same thing is true in Hebrew. So if you see the subject added in, it might be for emphasis. Now, the general word order, verb, subject, object, is good, but it's not always followed. Now, there can be many reasons for it not to be followed, one of which could be for emphasis. So if you see the subject come first, the subject is receiving emphasis or possibly receiving emphasis. If you see the object come first, it's receiving emphasis, possibly, okay? So keep that in mind. The word order is important, but it's not strictly followed. When it's not strictly followed, it could be for emphasis. Now keep in mind, adverbs can come before the verb. Uh, any sort of particles can come before the verb. Uh, words like kine, behold, that can come first. Obviously, conjunctions will come before the verb. So there's a lot of reasons why the verb might not be the very first word in the sentence. So just be aware that the verb can come later. Uh, you'll get a lot of additional information up front that helps with context, with, which helps with time. Remember, verbs don't have time built in, so it requires context. And those words will typically come first in the sentence. Uh, to help set the stage for the verb. But again, the general idea is verb, subject, object. We can also talk about conditional sentences. A conditional sentence is made up of two clauses. The first clause is the protasis. It's what sets the condition. Then there's the apodosis. This is what fulfills the condition or the ramifications of the condition, the, the consequence. The protasis, 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 however you pronounce it, often but not always will begin with im, which means if. It's not the only one, but that's a common one. Sometimes there is no marker. You just have to understand it from context. There is no then equivalent in Hebrew. So you just need to know your sentence structure, verb, subject, object. Understand that uh, you may or may not have im in the protasis and then given your knowledge of verb, subject, object, determine where the first clause ends, where the second one begins, and then in translation, you will add the helping word, then. 
Highly recommend checking out either Jacenius or Waltke O'Connor for understanding conditional sentences in Hebrew. Now, adverbs add additional information about actions, verbs, or other adverbs or adjectives. So they, they help add a lot of color. They break down into a few basic categories, adverbs of time. So when is this occurring? Adverbs of place, where is it occurring? Adverbs of degree. So how severe or how slight and adverbs of manner, which describe how the action is being performed. Lastly, we have Vav. Vav is a conjunction. But conjunctions might not always be translated and. Typically, we see the conjunctive Vav added to verbs. Whereas, as the Red Hymnal puts it, the disjunctive Vav occurs not with verbs, but with anything else, basically. Nouns, particles, etc. And contextually, uh, could be translated but when it's contrasting. Now, when it's introducing a parenthetical remark. It might still be translated and when it's providing circumstantial information. And it might be translated now when it's introducing content. Again, context will be key. You'll need to look at the full sentence or phrase in context to determine how you will translate the Vav. The Vav is very flexible. Just take a look at Brown Driver Briggs or Halot. Halot? Halot. H-A-L-O-T. There's a lot of information on Vav as a conjunction. So that's it. You understand the basics of syntax now. And we will begin to look at the derived stems next week, starting with Nifal. We'll see you then.